Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is like the biggest online sex toy retail store. And in fact, they don't just offer sex toys. They also have movies, they have lingerie. They basically have anything sexy that you could be looking for. Now they have an incredible offer. Get 50% off of any one item when you go to adamandeve.com. But that's not where it ends. So not only will you get 50% off any one item, they will also load up 10 free gifts for you on top of that. You will get six free movies, a free mystery pack that includes an item for him and a special toy for her and something we know you'll both enjoy, plus free shipping. Now that's a lot of free stuff, but you can only get this offer if you go to adamandeve.com and use my code HOLLY. That's Adam Eve. Dot com, use code Holly for 50% off of any one item plus 10 free gifts. I have Elizabeth Nolan Brown on. She is a journalist. She is the senior editor at Reason Magazine, and she is here to educate us all on the sex trafficking panic that is happening right now and maybe um, give us a better idea of what's really going on besides all of these crazy numbers that we are seeing on social media and um, a lot of misinformation going on out there. So Elizabeth, thank you so much for coming on. Yes, thank you so much for having me on. I was very excited to be asked as well. So, so just before we get into everything, how did you, because you're a libertarian, you're a feminist libertarian. Can you explain to people what that means? Because I also have an international audience as well who doesn't really um, know that much about the different political parties and, and what a libertarian is. Yeah, libertarian, and I say I'm a small L libertarian, so it's more of like a philosophy than, you know, believing in a particular party, although there is a libertarian party. And I just recently started to get a little bit more involved with that um, sort of out of discussed with both the Republicans and Democrats, but that's another story. Um, but yeah, I mean, libertarians sort of believe in uh, what was sort of classical liberalism or like, you know, I think it's something still called liberalism in the United States, but where it's, you know, based on more sort of socially liberal values or just, you know, um, you know, believing in civil liberties, believing in free speech, uh, not being socially conservative. I mean, libertarians were one of the earliest to fight for drug decriminalization and prostitution decriminalization and things like that. But they're also more, uh, well, in American terms at least, to the right on economic issues, uh, just in terms of not wanting government regulation in pretty much anything. So, and that includes your sort of financial matters or the economy or just individual sort of licensing issues and things like that. Okay. And so then how does that fit in with feminism? Because that word alone is something that has, I feel like has so many different meanings these days. Like when you say you're a feminist, depending on who you're talking to, they have like this different, all these different ideas of what that means. So what does being a feminist mean to you? Yeah. So, I mean, both, yeah, both libertarianism and feminism are sort of fraught terms that have a lot of meanings. Um, I think, you know, I, I say it because especially within the libertarian world, people sort of have this idea in the U S that libertarians are all that are they, we are, um, Republicans who like to smoke pot is one of the things that we're all sort of, uh, you know, that we're actually secretly conservative and uh, maybe misogynistic even or things like that. So I think, you know, libertarianism as a philosophy, it actually is very feminist just on its own without any qualifiers. But because people don't think of it like that, I'd like to add the feminist label, which, you know, to me, um, being a libertarian feminist then just means sort of uh, fighting for equal rights under the law regardless of your sex or gender or sexuality. And now, unfortunately, because so much of feminism does sort of mean more than that, it means sort of pushing for um, criminalization of certain things or special rights or just various, you know, things that, that aren't just about sort of, you know, an, an equal rights under the law measure, then I think that, you know, we actually end up pushing back against that sort of thing a lot. We end up sort of pushing back against mainstream feminists saying, you know, well, this is a bad thing. And so the government should get involved and make a law that, you know, throws people in jail for doing it. And, and, you know, that there are other ways to solve those issues. Right. So this is a perfect time to also introduce an acronym that not everybody may know that we use frequently on this show and in the adult community, which is a SWERF, which is a sex work exclusionary feminist. And basically they're feminists who are all for the equal rights of women, but anything that comes to sex work, uh, the idea is that all sex work is misogynistic, all, women's are, all women are victims of sex work, et cetera, et cetera. 
I know obviously from the work that you do um, that you don't believe that. So maybe tell me a little bit about how you became a journalist that seems to be more focused on how the law and politics intersects with sex work and, and what interested you in that. Yeah, um, I had a very sort of a varied career path, and um, I I didn't study journalism in school. I studied theater. Uh, I went to Ohio University. It's the same thing these <laughs> days, really, isn't it? <laughs> I studied, uh, yeah, and I studied in, in Ohio University, which is uh, on the Ohio-West Virginia border in Appalachia. Um, while I was going to school, I worked at a strip club in West Virginia um, for, like, my junior and senior year part-time and so that sort of I think gave me my foundation in sort of as an actual yeah, sorry as a, as a dancer yeah. okay yeah. I just wanted to I didn't if you worked at the front yeah, door yeah. your waitress okay yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so you have some experience in that area yeah I don't write about it a lot just because that's sort of you know there are plenty of people that do that and that's sort of not where I was coming at it from but like right. I mean, I'm not it's not like a secret or anything so um, right yeah so that Gave me a, yeah, I think a good foundation where a lot of journalists don't have in, in that sort of thing. And I've done, you know, various other things over time. Yeah, I was going to say that definitely makes you kind of like part of the community and, and gives you that foundation, like you said, that shows that like you understand the the plight of the people that, you know, you, you write about. Hey guys, if you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates.